Now, limited government sounds great, and it's certainly better than big government or even medium-sized government. But if you think about it, my predecessor has taken the unfortunate position of advocating for more taxes and less freedom. Maybe not compared to now by any means, but certainly compared to the amount of freedom and the lack of taxes that would be possible in a truly free society. I want to speak to you today about freedom, about principles and the fact that principles are unchanging. They are natural laws, as immutable as gravity. The specifics of a situation or a system never change a principle. Sometimes people like to say, not everything is black and white. Well, that's certainly true. But black and white exist. They are facts. My tie is white. My suit is black. Those are facts. I've been a journalist and a videographer for about the last two years professionally. And the first thing I learned in journalism school, the first thing anybody learns when you pick up a camera, is how to white balance. Basically, you point the camera at something white, and you press a button. That button tells the camera, hey, this is white. It's pure white. If you don't do this first and the camera has the wrong idea of what white is, then everything it does from then on is wrong. It looks wrong. It feels wrong. Anybody can tell that the color's off. It's like an off-key singer. Even if you don't know music, even if you don't know your scales, you can still tell when somebody's singing off-key. To think that government is necessary is a failure to white balance. The golden rule is a perfect example. It's an oversimplified example, but the concept is the same. The concept is this. Any aggression against you and the extensions of you, i.e. the fruits of your labor or your property, any aggression against you or your property is wrong. Always. That's a fact. It's a principle. If you can get past the indoctrination you've had extolling the wonders of government, then you can see that government is nothing more than aggression. It's the opposite of freedom. Examples? Well, let's start with taxes. Taxation is really just a euphemism for theft, quite literally at gunpoint. Taxes aren't voluntary. They can't be called voluntary. Even uh, the so-called one-cent voluntary tax is not voluntary. If I refuse to pay it, then the government agents would come to collect those taxes. If I continue to resist, they'd send more government agents with guns. And if they would try to take me to jail, if I resisted that attempt to kidnap me, I could possibly be shot. And taxes are also used to exercise social control. Think of taxes on cigarettes, taxes on machine guns, taxes on soda or salt, taxes on labor, taxes on the productive members of society. Taxes are usually targeted to mold a society, to try to shape it. This implies that society, governments think that society is theirs to mold. It implies that a collective abstraction has the main property interest or ownership of individuals. And this concept is utterly irre irreconcilable with freedom. If any decision is made for me without my consent, then I don't truly own myself and I am the property of whoever a bunch of people chose to own me without my consent. And usually that person is a sociopath who thrives on power and seeks control over people. In fact, the quest for power in a government system is incentivized. Theft in a government system is incentivized. Whoever brings the most stolen goods to his special interests or voters will remain in power and even has a chance to be rewarded with more power, which would give him more of an ability to steal more goods. Not even a specific, albeit noble, or even desirable end can justify an immoral means. Not if the means includes violating the non-aggression principle. Taxation for the so-called public good is yellow, not white. Healthcare, welfare, Medicare, they're all wrong because they rely on the premise that theft is okay. They make theft seem right, but only to those who have white balance. Social contracts are immoral, and in essence, they're slavery. Slavery is enforcing contracts on people who weren't a party to those contracts. It's people trading you as if they own you when you never sold yourself in the first place. In a free society, I cannot be bound by any contract that my neighbor's grandparents <coughs> signed before I was born, unless I voluntarily sold myself to another party. Then no decisions about me can be made without me. The Founding Fathers had an early prototype of this concept, a phrase they called, no taxation without representation. And they were on the right track, but as you've seen from recent history, representation, otherwise known as voting, has proven woefully corruptible 
and has given a veneer of legitimacy to the majority, tyrannizing the minority. And the smallest minority is always the individual. It's me or you, yourselves. Why should the individual dilute his decision making? If I've chosen to make my own decisions, then any force preventing me from that is aggression. Society will naturally adapt to and account for the individual decisions made by individual people. That is the essence of the free market, and that's why it works. No decision maker can ever solely coordinate the vast complexity of the market. Only the market can. The greatest good in the most balanced societies have always been born out of freedom, out of individuals making their own decisions and adapting future decisions based on the success or failure of their past decisions. That's how nature works. The whole universe is more complex and filled with more data than any man or group of men have the capacity to even comprehend, much less pretend to control. Systems naturally self-regulate. This is a constant, like gravity. Anything that goes up comes down. Equilibrium takes care of itself. You don't need an equilibrium czar. Pieces of paper can never change the laws of physics. Physical laws always trump paper laws. No matter what your torturer says, 2 plus 2 will never, ever equal 5. 